Tobias Harris and Buddy Hill struggles. The Sixers need to play more like a team, a little bit more organized, pass the ball more. And man, man, they got a tough stretch coming up. We'll talk about that and more next on Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Hello, my name is Keith Pompey. I'm one of the co-hosts of Locked On 76ers. John Mitchell, my right-hand man, can't be here today. <sighs> I'm missing him. He's missing being on here. But we got a lot to talk about. We'll have John back shortly, hopefully tomorrow morning, but we'll have him back. But today, you know, I got to talk to y'all about a lot of things, like Tobias Harris and Buddy Hill, right? They've been having some shooting woes, and they got to get that in order, right? And then we talk about the Sixers suffering communications and organizational issues, right? They got a lot of them. And then they must share the ball. So the first segment is going to be on Tobias, Buddy. Second segment is going to be on these issues they got to correct. And then the third one is they just got to get the ball. They got to share it. They got to share it. So I I know they got a game tonight. I'm not like, you know, avoiding the game, but I just feel like these are issues that regardless of who they're going to play, if they don't get this stuff resolved, they ain't going to win. Right. So that's why I want to talk about it. Now, look, I like Tobias Harris. Y'all know that. Sometimes some people call me a Tobias Harris apologist. They get a little upset with me. They say this, they say that. Right now, Tobias is in another rut, right? He's in a rut. And I want to say an offensive rut. When you look at Tobias offensively, he's just been missing shots, especially since the All-Star break. Since Joel Embiid has been out, he's been struggling. But since the All-Star break, it's like he's been a great defensive player but struggling mightily on the offensive end. And offensively, Tobias is averaging 10 points in the three games since the All-Star break in 30 minutes, right? He's shooting 35.3% from the field, 25% on threes. I mean, the brother's been missing bunnies. He's been doing all types of things. But on the defensive end, y'all, Tobias has been playing well. I mean, You know, he's been playing well, and he's been playing well as a role player. He's been averaging seven rebounds, 2.3 assists, two steals, and one block, right? And, you know, I don't know what it is. I I think it's a problem of – the. I think Tobias is waiting for the game to come to him, if that makes sense. Like, in in, in, in a perfect world, Tobias will go down there, he'll 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 pass the ball to somebody, get it back, he'll do whatever. But right about now, it ain't coming back. It's not. And he learned how to play, adjust his game to that when Joel was there. Now Joel's not. And it seems like he's rushing shots, so he's off rhythm. He's doing a lot of things. Um, you know, poorly on the offensive end. Now again, are they running plays? No. They look like a YMCU, YMCA team. We'll say YMCU. They look like a Y team, like strangers who just met and saying, who got next? I got next. Okay, come on. What's your name? That's what they look like. Seriously. There's no continuity, nothing like that. And we'll talk more about that in the second segment. 
But on the defensive end, he's been playing well. But he has to be a two-way player. In order for the 76ers to have success, Tobias Harris has to excel as a two-way player. And he just hasn't been recently. Now, Buddy Hill. When Buddy came here on February 8th, there was a lot of excitement about, you know, this guy. You know, he was the guy. His first game here, he had he dropped 20 points. He made four three points, four twelve, right? Thirty-three percent. And he's like, oh, that ain't that good. I mean, it's okay, but whatever. Second game, Buddy Hill drops 23 points. He makes four nine three pointers, right? He shot 56.3% overall from the field. He made nine to sixteen uh uh overall shots. The third game, Buddy drops 24 points. Get this. He made five of eight threes, nine of 13 from the field. So he shot 62.5% in the third game from three and 69.2% from the field. And in addition to that, he was getting assists. He was grabbing rebounds. He was doing everything, right? Then the fourth game comes, right, before the All-Star break. He has 22 points. He makes five of 11 threes, eight of 15 shots. He has 10 assists. A season high, 10 assists, right? Everything is great. Then they come back from the All-Star break. Since the All-Star break, Buddy Hill is averaging 12.7 points. He's shooting 37.8% from three. No, from the field. Take that back. From three, it seems okay, right? 41.7%. That's good. But he can't make two-point baskets. He can't. His assists, where he had eight assists and ten assists um, in back-to-back games, the last two games, he's averaging 3.7. And a lot of that had to do with the first one where he had six assists. And then one game, you know, he had four, right? So these are two guys who have to play extremely well for the Sixers to be victorious. For the Sixers to win, Buddy Hill and Tobias Harris has the ball. Now, whereas Tobias is like one of those things, he's not in rhythm. You know, Buddy was getting more touches before everybody came back. So Tobias is back. Nico Batum is back. You know, they got all these other things. Before, like, I'll be real with you. It was like... It was one of those things where you had Tyrese Maxey and Buddy Hill, but then when Tyrese Maxey would go out, it would be campaign and Buddy Hill. So it's kind of like they just running up and down. They flowing, they giving the ball to each other. They just doing all types of stuff. Now it's like there's other people out there. And these two guys just have been struggling. And unfortunately for the Sixers, you ain't going to win a lot of games with these two guys struggling. You're not. So they have to get these guys in gear. Now, for Buddy, it's like I think a lot of it is teams figuring it out. We're going to keep a guy on him. We're going to restrict him from going where he wants to go, and we're just going to turn him into a shooter. We're going to run into him. I mean, like close out on him. We're going to do this. We're just going to stick it to him to where he can't have success, you know, trying to create. And they made them extremely one-dimensional. The best play that I've seen as of late is when Tyrese Maxey gets the ball. And Buddy is like they do a, a, like a little bit. It's not a pick and roll. And it's not a dribble handoff. <laughs> but Buddy has the ball. He passes the ball to uh, Tyrese near him. And then Buddy goes to the corner. And Tyrese dribbles and then just zips the ball to him. He does a catch and shoot and three. To me, that's been their best play that I've seen for the most part, right? I mean, because there's a lot of action. People are looking at Tyrese. It looks like Tyrese is about to take you off the dribble. and But aside from that, I haven't seen it. And Tobias, I will say this about him. He's showing great leadership. He's getting booed. He's getting all this other stuff. But in regards to his play, it's a leadership. Like he's telling guys where they need to be on the floor He's defending. I mean, he had some tough matchups, too. The last game, he had to play. He had to guard Giannis, right? So he's had some tough matchups. But 
I'm here to tell you, they got to get this together, especially tonight. <laughs> Come on, you got Boston Celtics in Boston. Come on, man. If if Tobias, like now, they struggled the last time they went to Boston. Tobias was horrible. But they had some different players on the team, too. Now, Joel didn't play. Maxi didn't play. Nico Batum didn't play. But you had Marcus Morris. You had all those other guys. So Tobias has to get it together. They have to get it together. If not, it's going to be a long night or a quick night for the 76ers. You know, whatever you want to say. It's just it's it's going to be it's, it's going to be a, a bad matchup for the Sixers if they don't get this thing ready. And um, you know, I'm here to tell you it, it starts with Tobias, it starts with Buddy. I mean, of course, of course. <laughs> You know, we're talking about um, Tyrese Maxey's the best player. So I get, yeah. But outside of that, you know, you know what Tyrese is going to give you. These other guys are going to have to step up and they're going to have to show you a little something, something for them to do whatever. Right. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan has a lineup of SUVs with the capability to take your adventures to the next level. We talk about the Nissan Road. The 2024 is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusives Google built in is, is your always up, updating assistant to call on for almost anything. I'm telling you, it's crazy. if I want this car. I mean, it's crazy, but it's like we get spoiled. You know what I mean? So Gorns are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play stores are built right into the 12.3 inch HD touchscreen, right? I'm telling you, this Rogue is banging. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-side crossover for your next adventure. Now, another car that I like, it's the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder. It has room up to eight, an expansive cargo um, capacity, and advanced available 4x4 four four capability. <sighs> Take the Nissan Road, Nissan Pathfinder, and Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. I'm telling y'all, do it today, people. You definitely want to do that today. You can't, I'm telling you, you definitely want to do that today. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channel app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On Plus, our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on free Fire TV channel apps. I'm telling y'all, like I keep saying, <laughs> do it today, definitely. Now, the thing that I also want to talk to y'all about, the thing that I also want to talk to y'all about, the thing that I also want to talk to y'all about is, it seems like a little echo, right? Is, you know, the Sixers are suffering from like communication and organizational issues. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, we talked about Buddy Hill being a part of this team. We talked about um, campaign being a part of this team. But it's also one of those things where, um, you know, you got Kyle Lowry back. 
We talked about Nico Batum. Now, Nico Batum's been back for a couple games. And then you have um, DeAnthony Melton. So when you look at it, it's like a re, it's a whole, it's a different group. You don't have Joel playing anymore. So what it is, is you got these guys and they're, and you got a lot of guys, but you have new faces, especially point guards. So what it is, is it's like, where does such and such want the ball at? Where do I get them the ball at? Or, and then you have other guys like, okay, where does such and such want to want to run down the court? Um, you know, and then I think it's, it's some of this where you also have new guys playing different positions. So a prime example, and I'm not trying to call anybody out, but this is a prime example. There was a point in the game, the last game, where Paul Reed grabbed a defensive rebound. And typically when you do, he grabbed a defensive rebound. And typically when he grabs a rebound, you want guys getting in their running lanes, going down the court going down there 100 miles an hour or whatever, just so you could get out in the break. Well, dudes were standing there. It was him and three other dudes in the paint. That's like, so it's kind of like the other team got back on defense and you messed up. Then there was another time when he grabbed a defensive rebound and it was Maxi, the point guard. And then there was Tobias, the power forward. So what he does is, he out, he, you know, you want to get Tobias going, this and that. Tobias can dribble. You know, Tobias was a, a point forward in high school, right? You know, McDonald's All-American, you know, a standout. People criticize him, but he's still a standout player in the league. But you give him the ball, but you don't give it to the point guard. You know, so there's a lot of things like that going on. And then it doesn't look good. Like right now without Joel, it's one of those things where they're struggling. They're struggling. So yesterday, being Monday, they spent practice trying to get figure things out. And it's a lot. Like you have, you know, like I said, you got a new backup point guard in Kyle, and you have another point guard, your third string point guard in Cam. All three of these guys, and along with Maxi, they play because, you know, Maxi is more of a combo guard. You know, these other two guys are point guards. So he's going to get minutes with them. But at the same time, they got to figure it out. Now, again, it's been a lot of, because a lot of new guys. So they're, they're just like out there free file, free, free, freestyling, right? They're just out there doing what they got to do, doing what they want to do. And that doesn't help you win big games. Unless you got like LeBron. Or you got Embiid, like, you know what I mean? Just give them the ball, let them go to work. But right now, when you look at it, they need to get more organized. They got to get into sets. They got to do things. And guys have to communicate. They have to. Guys have to say, look, you got to, and that's what the practice time is for. You know, you know. sometimes I feel like in the NBA, practice can be, and this, they play so many games, and you have a lot of veterans to whereas sometimes you say for a veteran team, practice can be a little bit overrated, like just getting them out there, this and that. You don't want to do that too much because you don't want to get guys tired. You don't want to get injured, like, you know, things like that. You just don't want to wear them down. But right about now, like, yeah, this is a veteran team, but they need a lot of practice. Guys need to go out there and uh, figure things out because, you know, it's not like you're saying, okay, I got to, a shooting guard now, but he is a shooting guard, but a guy who just say, he just comes off of screens and hit catch and shoot. Boom. Nah, you got, you're incorporating point guards. Like I said before, you got other people that has to know. Now you got Paul Reed, who was a backup center, you know, now, I mean, let's face it. He was playing. <laughs> he was really just playing the, the, the first couple of minutes in the second quarter, the first couple minutes in the in the fourth quarter. Now it's like, yo, I need you to play. I need you to do things. You're going to be out here extended time. You know, he was giving us short bursts before. So there's a lot that they have to work on. You know, they're, tr- they're doing it. Um, but it's, it's just a lot. And, and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I mean, we'll see how they do it. But um, they just got to protect it because if not, like I said, it could get ugly. 
it can oh, it can get ugly, and uh, we'll see what they can do tonight. But again, it's not just about tonight. It, it's, it's a lot of games that they have to play, and they need to step up and play well in order for them to uh, get this thing right. Because you know they've been losing games. They've been losing games, and right now they're fifth in the East, and uh, it's not out of the question that they can slide down to the to the uh, play-in uh, tournament. I mean, next month's going to be tough. They got a lot of games on the road next month, so it's not out of the question that they can slide down to the play-in tournament. So that's something that they got to get ready. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today, I want to say how I really feel about something. You might even be thinking about the same thing this week. You know, for me, it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes, you know, you, 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 it's always good to have somebody to talk to, right? You know what I mean? Like, you know, like I'm going to tell you, I really feel about the potential, you know, you know there was a potential Pascal Siakam trade. Like, I'm like, hey, go ahead and get them. They didn't, right? You know, so it's a lot of things. And that, that's just a joke. But what I'm being, I'm being real. Like, you always have to, it's good to have someone to talk to. I mean, because everybody has something that's on their mind, right? So when when you have better help, you know, therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports team. And it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking about starting ther therapy, give better help a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible, and suited for your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on MBA to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P dot com slash locked on MBA. As I always say, y'all, do it today, people. Definitely do it today. Now, the one thing that the Sixers need to do, and I'm going to be real, they got to do a better job of sharing the ball. Um, and I think that will, to get back to the first thing I said, I think that would basically help this, this Tobias Harris get off the snide offensively, right? I think that that will enable – Nico Batum, when Joel was there, was a, a quality 3 and D. This guy ain't even getting shots right now, right? So I think they need to do that, right? I mean, if we're going to be real, like, yeah, Maxi scored 50 points, 51 points against the Utah Jazz the night that he was named All-Star, right? He was had momentum. He was flowing everything. Tobias had, like, a lot of points as well. But come on, they can't do that. How many times is that going to happen? They got to get every, everybody involved. And the Sixers know that. You know what I mean? And that's why Batum, as bad as the Sixers have been looked, is confident that the team can turn things around. He believes that they can be a good offense when moving the ball. And this is what he says. When we're missing Joel, we got to find another way to score. We can't rely, like I said a couple weeks ago, on Tyrese to get 50 points. That won't happen. So we got to find a way to move it. Of course, he's our leader, talking about Maxi. He's going to find ways to score. He's going to do his thing. But we got to find um, a way, like how we can involve everybody and move it. Find a way to move the ball change size and not be a one pass shot team. And I'm telling you, that's what they are. Like they're a one pass shot team. Um, it becomes a little predictable. It's like they're trying to, instead of running an offense, they're trying to outscore teams. They're coming out, 
They're getting shots quick. And then what that leads to, I hate to say it, it leads to guys when they get the ball, they start looking for stuff. They start attacking the rim with the ball. They're passing up shots to teammates because they don't know. They don't think they're going to get the ball back. So then it becomes, like I said, pick up game at the Y. And that leads to turnovers. That leads to bad shots. That leads to mistakes. It leads to a lot of things. And, you know, the Sixers, again, they don't have the luxury of um, making mistakes right now. They got to play great basketball to win these games. I mean, they do. Like, they do. No one's feeling sorry for them because Joel's not playing the whole nine. They have to play great basketball right about now. And that involves playing team ball. And I'll say this. Last year, when um, Joel Embiid was out, when Tyrese Maxey was out, and James Harden was out, I remember, y'all remember that. They had, it was Tobias, it was Shake Milton, it was a couple of other, uh, uh, D. Mel. They were rolling. I mean, they were competitive. They were playing great ball. Why? Because they were playing team basketball. So that's what they have to do. And if and if that takes for Tobias, maybe taking – I mean, not Tobias, uh, Maxi taking less shots. Now, again, he is the guy. He's the guy that you. he has to take the money shot. He has to be able to create and do stuff. But also, they got to get other people involved. Now, for me, personally, I mean, I talked about it before. That's probably part of the reason why you might want to start Kyle, right? Might be. Because what Kyle does is he's a point guard. And he's an a all-star, a former six-time all-star, Olympic gold medalist. And what he's going to do is he's going to make sure guys get the ball and set them up. And that's what they need right now. I mean, they do. Like, do I expect them to win tonight? I don't. I don't. I mean, would I be surprised if it's competitive? No, I wouldn't be surprised. Do I expect them to to win on, um, on Friday? Yeah, I do. I expect them to beat the Charlotte on it. But then I don't know if they can beat. Uh, Dallas at Dallas on a noon game, well, one o'clock East Coast time, noon uh, Dallas time on Sunday. So there's a lot going on right now, right? A lot going on. So we'll see. But again, they got to play great ball, great ball, great ball. And, um, you know, it's good that D Melt and Nico Batoon are back because what they're doing now is like, they, they got guys who can provide that perimeter defense, so which is pretty cool. But you're not going to beat teams being a one-pass <laughs> shot team. You got to spread that rock, spread it around. You got to make sure that Nico gets a couple threes up because he can hit it. You got to get him involved. And a lot of times the brother is wide open, like standing there like, with his arms, like, you know, like, give me a look. And it's like, he ain't even there. So the 76ers got to get that to get that together, man. They really do. The 76ers have to get that together and make sure they got everything right because it just looks bad. It does. But, look, I want to thank y'all for listening and let y'all know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channel app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On Plus, our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on Fire TV channel app. Do it today, people. Definitely do it today. But also, I want to let I want to thank y'all for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. 
part of the Locked On Seventy, the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Peace. You are Locked On Seventy Sixers, your daily Philadelphia Seventy Sixers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. <laughs>